Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, I am going to reveal you about the architecture of service level agreements. If you are like a beginner and you are starting Pega for the very first time, maybe you will find this little bit advanced topic. If that case, just skip this video and then you can come back later when you complete this entire video course. To explain about this architecture, you don't want to build anything. All Pega will take care of this architecture, the underlying architecture. They have their out of the box supporting rules that does all this SLA processing. All you have to do is just configure the SLA rule and then place it at the right place. It can be at a case level, stage level, process level or a step level. And then Pegas out of the box agent queues and the standard agent will take care of the SLA processing and it can execute whatever escalation activities or it can also increase the urgency values. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how Pega builds the architecture of the XLA processing. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to show you how you can place the SLA rule per case level, stage level, process level and step level. Let's get started. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to update the goal and deadline to just 30 seconds so that we can easily see the output of this SLA rule. And then I'm going to say deadline is also 30 seconds and I'm going to save and check in this rule. Now let's get back to the claim records case and use this SLA rule in the on-site investigation process. So click on the on-site investigation process and go to goal and deadline tab. There you can use existing SLA and specify the new SLA. Click a save. Now we have successfully configured the SLA into the on-site investigation process. Let's create a new climb request case and see how this SLA processing behaves. I'm going to create a new case here and then provide some name and click on submit. And now the case has entered into the investigation stage. I would say that don't edit this case at this moment. Just close and open this case after say like 30 seconds. 30 second window is almost over. Now we can go to app explorer, click on the class to view the instances. There you see the last case C8 that has been updated by the service level agent. So it's kind of some agent or some background processing has updated this case. Let's open the case. Let's go to the audit tab. There you can find some history data for goal time reached and then deadline time is reached. Both these has been performed by the SLA agent. Let's go to clipboard and check the urgency for this case. So you go to PY or page and from here you can check the urgency. By default, Pega also uses some urgencies. The SLA urgency is just 60 and there are other two urgencies, default urgencies as 20. That's why you are seeing it as 80. We already configured this 60 in the SLA rule. So if you go to SLA rule and check that initial urgency is 10 plus goal time is reached 30, 40. Now deadline is 20. So 40 plus 20, 60. So we have reached the urgency correctly. So something or some background processing has executed this service level agreement and it has increased the urgency. So if you had added any actions here, the agent must have done this action as well. Now let's see how Pega handles this. First, let me reveal the architecture theoretically, then we can see it in Tracer how it works. The first step is Pega uses an internal process flow with an assignment shape and it accepts SLA parameter. So internal process flow will be spin up and it also has a SLA parameterized. So parameterized in the sense like whatever SLA we pass, the parameter will be using that SLA. Next, what it does is, as I told before, an assignment shape will be created of type internal. An internal assignment will be created and then an SLA queue item will be created and assigned to SLA agent. So queue item is a standard agent processing that assigned to a SLA agent with a goal time. So SLA agent, it runs, it picks the queue item, it processes this escalation activity. In our use case, it will increase the urgency and then it checks if there is some deadline action is configured, yes. Then it requeues the queue item for deadline. Once deadline is reached, again the same SLA agent will process the deadline item and then it does the escalation, increases the urgency and then it requeues if there is some past deadline action. So it will end up in this place. 
at the end we should see an assign internal instance and a system queue service level instance that is waiting for past deadline processing okay these are all theories let's compare it with tracer let's start by creating a new climbs records case before submit Let's use the tracer and then click on submit. Now your tracer should capture all the rule execution. You can pass the tracer and then come back to the case type. So you see the case is C12 and the case is currently into the investigation stage. Let's wait for a few seconds for the SLA agent to pick and process this case. So as I told the goal is on 30 seconds only. So let's wait for 30 to 1 minute. Almost it is 1 minute. Now let's refresh and see the audit. You can see from the audit that service level agent has processed this case. Goal time is reached that is 30 seconds and it has completed the task and then service level agent again it picked the case for deadline time and then it completed the task. As per the requirement our complete task is to add urgencies. Let's check that. Go to clipboard and then check on the PY work page. So on PY work page, you should see the urgency values. So you can see PX urgency work SLA is 60, but the total work is 80. So SLA is only 60. We can see the configuration in SLA. So SLA urgency is 60. Pega also do assign some other urgencies for the work class as well as for the step SLA. So that is why you see the urgency as 80. Now let's get back to the tracer and check the rules that are involved. If you scroll to the start, the tracer, you can find that the on-site investigation flow has started. Parallelly, there is also another flow started, which is called PZ internal process flow. You can click and open the flow in the design studio. I just clicked it and I can see the configuration of the flow. Now let's get back to that theoretical concept. As I already mentioned, Pega uses an internal process flow with assignment shape and the SLA parameter. I can see an assignment shape and also SLA is configured in that assignment shape. You will get this clock sign whenever an SLA is configured on the assignment shape. Let's double click on this. First thing what you note here is it uses a custom router activity of type connect. Internally, Pega creates an assignment internal class for the assignment type of connect. A little scroll down, you will see service level agreement. This flow accepts an input parameter of SLA name. So where does this SLA name gets passed to this flow? Let's check the tracer. So in the tracer step, if you click on this step and then check the parameter page name, you will find the SLA name as start investigation. So Pegas out of the box engine has passed this SLA name into this flow. The SLA has been applied to the internal assignment class. Let's scroll forward to check both the instances. So here you can see two pages, one assign page and the other queue page. Click on the assign page. There you will find the PX OBJ class of the page is assign internal. The PX ref object key is C12. Let's check the queue page. Queue page is of class system queue service level and the PY minimum date time for processing is the goal time. You can also see it is assigned to the agent service level events. Let's check all these three. We will check the assign internal class, we will check the system queue service level class and then we will also check the agent. Let's start with the internal class. Go to the app explorer and then open assign internal. Click on the class to view the instances. You can see there is an instance created for the case C12. You can click and open the instance and then view XML to see the attributes of this instance. Here you can see goal time as today's time. Deadline time as today's time and the late time which is the pause deadline is plus three working days. You can also see this queue instance corresponds to the same case ID C12. So Pega has created an assigned internal class instance and a system queue service level instance. Basically all classes that inherit from system queue or the queue instances or standard queue instances that will be queued to some standard agents. So Pega has out of the box SLA agents that will be processing these queue items. Let's check the agent. It is on the rule set Procom. Go to records agents and from there you can see the agent Pega Procom. Open that. You will find the agent name service level events and the activity is process event. 
So this is the Pega out of the box agent activity that does the SLA processing. Let's revisit the PPT theory. So Pega uses internal process flow, SLA as parameter. It creates a new internal assignment and SLA queue item for goal time. Yes, it did till now. Then SLA agent process at goal time and requeue the queue item for deadline time. It does the same here. It uses the new assign page which is of assign internal class and it also requeues if there is some deadline or pause deadline. It requeues to the same SLA and it uses execute SLA to do the post processing or the SLA processing actions. Like it can increase the urgency as well as it can do some escalation activities. So this is the main activity. You can go ahead and explore this activity on your own and this get executed by the Pega Procom agent which executes every 30 seconds and it is a standard agent. I hope now you got a big picture on how the process level SLA works. So Pega uses its own standard process flow and then it has its own assignment shape with a parameterized SLA that passes the SLA which you provided for the process SLA. So the SLA rule gets passed there and when the flow enters the assignment shape, the SLA triggers and it creates a goal event into assign internal table and assignment class is created and also a system queue service level a queue instance is created for this standard agent to act upon. So the standard agent will run during the goal time it picks the item and then it process the item and if it says if it finds a deadline then it requeues to its own and it waits till the deadline to again pick and process it. So this is how the architecture is designed. Till now we saw about SLA configuration on process level but there are on other levels where you can configure SLA. First thing you can configure SLA on a case level. You can go to settings tab and then you can scroll down for goal and deadline from where you can choose the service level agreement. So you can either decide not to use any service level agreement or you can use custom SLA or an existing SLA. You can also define SLA on stage level. So click on stage level and then you can go to goal and deadline where you can use the SLAs here. Third is on process level which we did just now and fourth is on step level. So when you say step level the step should be waiting for some user actions. So this is the collect information is an user action step. So you can click here there you will get an option to define goal and deadline. Let's try the custom SLA. Existing SLA is when you already configured an SLA rule you can use the SLA rule here but custom SLA from here you can define your own custom SLA configuration but with minimal configuration you don't have an option to set the assignment ready configurations. Let's say I'm going to just keep everything as default. Let's say goal as one day deadline as two day. If you just save now your SLA will be applied here at the back end Pega will be creating a new service level agreement. So you can from here itself we can open the rule. So click on open SLA. This will open up a new SLA rule of collect information and from here you can see the configurations whatever we provided in the case designer. For SLA processing to work Pega needs two things. One assignment instance and two queue instance for SLA agent. When you configure SLA at a step or an assignment level either in a work list or a work basket assignment then you can use the add assign activity that will help to create a queue instance but when you configure SLA at a case level stage level or process level then you need an assignment that is why Pega uses some supporting process flows with an assignment shape of type internal and it also uses service level agreement as parameter. I hope now you understood how this SLA architecture works. This is one of the main technical question which you may get in some interviews. You want to really know the architecture behind this SLA processing. We saw different types of rules are getting used. We saw about the standard agents, the queue instances which helps with the SLA processing. And in the background processing module, I will also touch base with these SLA agents. So whenever you hear about the time bound processing, you should think of this SLA processing which you can do in the Pega. I'll see you in the next video.